Hey there, folks. It's the frequency from beyond space and time, at the same time, every time. You're listening to Mad Tower Radio. What up, everybody? Welcome back to another Mad Tower Radio. Uh, my name is Dan, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Ryan and Christian. Hey, what do you do? And, Yo. and on this podcast, we like to talk about anything strange, paranormal, ghost schools, goblins. You get the gist of it. If you're listening by now, you get the gist of it. <laughs> you know? I'm not going to stay here, waste my breath, waste your time, waste my time. We're just fucking, you know, go crazy and go stupid talking about crazy, creepy stuff, you know? It's like Goosebumps, the podcast. Like Monster. What sick person clicks on, like, the 28th episode of a podcast and they're like, I'm going to start here. (laughs) You fucking psychopath. (laughs) Yeah, that's you, bro. This message is for you. Go go back to episode one. It's a little rough. (laughs) I know. That's when you guys are recording out of a cave mouth, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's when I was recording on a boost mobile phone. Yeah, listen, it was March. We thought we thought we'd all be back to work in a month. Shit was shit was different back then, okay? <laughs> we let things slide from then. Yeah. So many podcasts were born, I feel like, during the pandemic. So oh, many what? like projects started and then it's kinda like life returned to normal, We're like, well I guess we're just gonna Keep doing this, huh? Like, I guess that's me. Now. Like a fucking year and a half hiatus. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. You guys did have a pretty big hiatus. Yeah. You know, pandemic ended in my well, the pandemic didn't end, and my job was like back to work. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I'm like, what cool. about this disease? And they're like, put a mask on. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay. They said, said we'll check the studies and see, but we're not sure if it's really even there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It'll be fine. Oh, yes. Yeah, that, like, that was like me and Gundam. I was like, oh, this is going to be like a fun little thing to do while I'm locked inside. And here I am, staring at about 45 unbuilt kits. <laughs> 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 I just got a second high RG high new in the mail today. Your Samsung? So, means. So, means that we're going to raffle it off. That's right. Of the RG. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have two. Go fuck yourself. All right. People over there fighting in the streets for them, and I ordered two. I didn't like, I'm, I'm not trying to scalp it. It belongs to me. But uh, yeah, I have two, and you don't, so have fun. Is it a stretch to call a Gundam a robot? Because that kind of segues into my topic. Oh. Oh. Well, I personally think that uh, it's not a robot, it's a mecha, but sure. I'll let you. I'll let you slide with that this time. Well, today I wanted to talk about a phenomenon called the uh, the uncanny valley. Are any of you familiar with it? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I fucking thought you were going to say today we're going to talk about the Autobots. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> Where are they? As From Michael Bay, those the documentary. Is it real Bumblebee, Bumblebuster? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with it. Okay. Have you had any experiences with it? I had an experience with it, I'd say, when I was younger. Um, there just was like, I, I remember I was I was at Six Flags with like, it wasn't Six Flags, it was Kitty Land. My mm-hmm. elementary school, would, at the end of the year, we'd go to Kitty Land. Yeah. And there was like this like drawing of like a, sh- just looked human enough to say that might be a human, but it didn't look, there was like things that were off about it that just like eyes were a little too long or something like it just was like that thing where it just barely looked like human enough but it wasn't yeah christian you know demons um yeah i put a little uh put a little uncanny valley on my kale this morning <laughs> for breakfast no that's uh that's hidden valley mm. that's where the brotherhood of steel lives in new vegas <laughs> <laughs> no I, I i can't say that i've uh personally experienced it but it I see people like throw it out a lot in films and shit when they want to like say yeah. something smart. Yeah. <laughs> but um, let, let's say I'm the supportive host who does not know what it is. So I, I might need a definition, Dan, if you could help me. Okay. Well, very quickly, I want to share my experience with the Uncanny Valley. And that was um back in high school i was in my like sophomore fucking literature class and we were reading beowulf and uh 
teacher got lazy and she was like, yeah, we're going to watch the Beowulf movie. Bruh. And she puts it on and I'm watching this from like, I don't know, 12 feet away on a fucking CRT TV, you know? And like, I'm like, wow, this, this looks fucking sick, dude. This is a fucking awesome movie, blah, 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 blah. And we didn't get to finish it. And so I went home and it was on Netflix and I watched it. And after about like 10 minutes of watching it, I was like, what is going on? And then I was like, oh shit, this movie's fucking animated. <laughs> 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 yeah, dude. I, the, and then like once I had that realization, creeped me the fuck out. I couldn't finish the movie. You didn't like, um, fucking computer generated Russell Crowe? No. It was weird, man. He's like it was a really big weird. Fleshy man baby monster in that movie, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Russell Crowe. What's his name? Grundle? <laughs> yeah, Gremlin. Grund- his name's Gunch. Grindelwald? Gun- <laughs> um, From Harry Potter. So, to kind of move things forward, uh, the Uncanny Valley is a term used to describe the relationship between the human like appearance of a robotic object and the emotional response that it evokes. All right, so let me pull up a picture of the graph. Okay. Okay. Is that, is that, how does that make you feel like right off the cut? I don't see anything. No, I, <laughs> I just mean like what emotional response to the title illicit or the definition the uncanny valley um it, it, it feels like that uh phenomenon that people have that where they like see eyes or like see human shapes in patterns randomly like your brain just sort of like builds that connection oh like in clouds and stuff like that or like a like a tree stump it's like, like oh it looks moon. like a screaming face so basically if you look at this graph right yeah there's like the closer that it gets to, like, human, you know, the more that we like it. But then uh-huh. when it gets, like, a little too close to human, but not quite, is when we're like, what the fuck is that? Is that why I'm attracted to RC from Transformers? No, that's fine. But, like, um, <laughs> it's it's mainly referring to those, like, those robots, and, like, the almost look human and they're like you're something is off you know like this right here oh hold on <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Like yes yeah, they're like theme park animatronics yeah like shitty flesh oh, golems oh, oh, oh. yeah oh, oh. yeah and it's it's a fucking weird phenomenon and it, it mostly like it 100 percent like corresponds to like uh robots right it's pretty much basically just you look at something that is almost human but it's not right and so this fucking was coined by a robotics professor in like the 1970s he's japanese so i I didn't remember his name off the top of my Uh, head you give me and ryan a shot at it we'll pronounce that name don't you worry yeah yeah I'm an right. anime person. Yeah. Uh, really? I didn't know. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea you liked anime. It only pays my oh. bills. Oh, this one ain't hard. Masahiro Mori. Oh, okay. my bad. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was uh, the 1970s, and it's weird because the reason they think that this whole thing is elicited is because... It looks human enough to um, elicit, like, sympathetic responses and signals from your brain, but just not human enough to be, like, to trigger, like, fight or flight. Uh, Oh. I'm kind of, like, ready to swing on this thing. I don't know about that not fight or flight thing. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's really weird. And then, like, you know. You get into uh, you get into it, and it's like this feeling goes away when, um, like, if we can't tell the difference, then you know the robots win. <laughs> like uh, technology will advance to a point where this is no longer a problem. You're saying? Yeah, I think technology will advance to a point where this is no longer a problem. 
So I think like, you know, the one last, like, I think one of the last humps that the AI overlords are going to have to get over is the uncanny. Um, you know, it's so, easy for them to overcome when they, so just if they can perfectly, if they can perfectly fucking impersonate us, then like GG, it's done. Well, I mean, that's going to be easy for them to do when they just inject their consciousness into a human meat suit. <laughs> Yeah. This kind of reminds me of, like, how canines have evolved after, yeah. like, so much time being domesticated that their faces and their muscle structures have adapted to look more human-like to garner more affection. Oh. Oh, yeah. They've gotten That's nuts. cuter, babier faces so that people would, you know, love them more. Yeah. yeah. And now the track So let me get in. I want to get into some like interesting, um, interesting things about the fucking Uncanny Valley, and one of them is that um, this is not a uniquely human um, experience, right? So there was a study conducted in 2009, right? A group of five monkeys were shown three <laughs> images. <laughs> Two different 3D monkey faces, one realistic, one unrealistic, and a real photo of a monkey. The monkey's eye gaze was used as a proxy for preference or aversion. Since the realistic 3D monkey face was looked at less than either the real photo or the unrealistic monkey, this was interpreted as an indication that the monkey participants found the realistic 3D face aversive or otherwise preferred the other two images. As one would expect with the Uncanny Valley, more realism can lead to less positive reactions, and this study demonstrated that neither human-specific cognitive process nor human culture explained the Uncanny Valley. So, you can, like, I guess that does away with some of the criticisms, because one of the criticisms of the Uncanny Valley is that, like, uh, it, it's a generational thing. And that, like, younger generations who are going to consume more CGI, see more robots in their day-to-day life, are hypothesized to be less affected by this issue. Ooh. Mm. That's interesting. It is interesting. But I also think it's bullshit. You know? I, I went to, you know, Disneyland as a kid, and they got all those pretty high-budget animatronics or whatever i never felt too uncomfortable by them but they didn't they weren't looking that good to be to be completely frank about it yeah like a like a wax museum they they look like shitty wax museums at the hall of presidents yeah yeah those are, yeah it kind of reminds me of like have you seen people with those like when they try to make like take like a like an anime character and make them look human oh yeah those are that that kind of is what that reminds me of, where it's just like that is you know, it kind of reminds me of like the not deer, like that's something trying really hard to look like me or like, yeah, look like a human. And I think that's unsettling just for the fact that it's pulling it off in a very poor way, but also yeah. there is that thought of if you see that's like why are you trying to blend in with me like mm. what oh, are yeah, you yeah, trying yeah. to that's do? The whole, that's the whole creepy aspect of it, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, we can take solace now because, as far as we know, robots aren't building themselves. Yeah. Um, but you know, if the, if you see someone looking a little fucking funky, it might. Uh, slap I don't know. <laughs> it might be a robot. Check if they're drinking motor oil. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I there... knew a guy once. <laughs> what, yeah. What's the? If you had to guess, the. Venn diagram of people who think like there's there's robot infiltrations and also are getting gang stalked by robots. <laughs> getting gang stalked. Well, it kind of brings me to my next point, right? So, do you know what Capgras syndrome is? Or I think I think that might be French Capgras. I don't know. It's C A P G R A S. No, I no, I never heard of that. No. Okay, so Capgras syndrome is a um mental mental problem where somebody believes that a person has been replaced by a perfectly Ooh. identical copy of someone like you know it'd be like if, uh, if you, yeah 
doppelganger. It'd be like if I thought that there was like a perfect imitation that like replaced my wife. <laughs> and I had like no idea. And that's not necessarily robotic, is it? Uh no, so when you question so there's some people that when you like question these people that are suffering Capgrass syndrome, they have claimed that the the replacement is a robot. Oh, like uh like alien. Yeah. Like, like, alien like, like synthetics. Like the synthetics, yeah. Yeah. They believe that their fucking this person in their life has been replaced with a ex- perfectly identical, um, like synthetic a robot. Hey, mm-hmm. that, that kind of you're getting in my head a little bit. I'm gonna, you know, wake up tomorrow and be like, wait, a yep. is the bus driver a synth? Yep, yep. <laughs> so these guys, so these two uh, scientists, Ellis and Lewis, argue that um, the Capgrass delusion arises from an intact, intact system for overt recognition coupled with a damaged system for covert recognition which leads to conflict over an individual being identifiable but not familiar in any sense in any emotional sense this supports the view that the uncanny valley could arise due to issues of categorical perception that are particular that are particular to the way the brain processes information oh, so yeah. that's, that's kind of interesting i could i could definitely see like I th- sometimes I think take for granted how fucking a, a rat's nest of nonsense and neurons our brains are. If like the the one connection between like familiarity and like a person you know gets weird, yeah, I could totally see it. Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, this isn't sure, but this isn't like I don't know. I definitely think there's merit to this fucking uncanny valley being a real thing because. Mm-hmm. Um, we've seen it elicited in you, me, and Ryan in the past like ten minutes. You know, yeah. So I don't think I don't think this is I don't think it's a ge- and we saw it in monkeys. I don't think it's a <laughs> yeah. generational thing. Dude. The monkeys see it. There's got to be something going they on. They know, and because it makes perfect have- sense to me. With no higher education training, like you should be, you should not like something that's trying to impersonate you. You know? You're telling me... Yeah, because it's creepy. That, like, we should show the monkeys um, the remake of Rise of the Planets of the Apes and show them those CG monkeys? We should not show them that. The monkeys are already in the Bronze Age, right? Or, like, All right. that gif of the monkeys dancing that I like so much. <laughs> where they're getting Cold, down. Coldplay music video? Oh. Yeah. Wait, is that, Cold yeah. Play, is that a Coldplay music, music video? <laughs> I think so. The monkey schmoovin' gif? <laughs> the monkey schmoovin. So, I want to push it into my next little segment for the Uncanny Valley. I went ahead and wanted to bring back um, X takes for this one. You know, Christ, my my favorite segment. Mm. And I kind of, you know, I kind of like try to do an unbiased post on um, 4chan and you know make a fucking uh, you know. Just try to just try to be as neutral as possible so that the responses are um natural, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're not fishing for anything. Yeah. But this one I kinda kinda stirred the water, kinda threw out some chum. <laughs> um I said, Has anyone had an experience with the uncanny valley? Do you think that there could be artificial humans that try to impersonate there are artificial humans that try to impersonate us and get caught because of this effect. Are there undistinguishable androids in the world already? <laughs> and uh, this guy linked me a YouTube video. He says, I keep getting this ad, and this woman gives me the most unnerving feeling. <laughs> I'll look up the model, but I can't find her name. And I'm going to share this ad with you gentlemen right now. Now that you now that the ad is in front of your face and we've solved our technical difficulties, how do you uh, how do you feel about the woman in this advertisement? See what he means by that? She looks like the CGI what? Angelina Jolie from Beowulf. Oh yeah, oh yeah. She looks like Battle Angel Alita, bro. Yeah, yes, that was that was what, what my reference was thinking of. I couldn't think of the name. Yeah, I don't like this. No, no, sir, no, sir. Uh, That's yeah, definitely no. not a real human being. 
right? Or is it? Wait. No, I mean, Huawei, Huawei is just fucking, like, spyware. Oh, you're right. You know? You're right. There, there was, like, that whole court case. So, I don't know. But that was the that was the <laughs> that was the only fish. This guy might be this this guy might be getting gang stalked, but that's the only <laughs> that's the only fish that showed up to my chum infested waters here. Getting, about, uh, androids. Gang stalked by my Huawei waifu robot. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. The channel that uploaded this? Huawei Mobile Cool. Yeah, something fishy's going on oh, with yeah. Huawei. Croatia. Hmm. That yeah. doesn't sound like a real place. <laughs> I can't say I've ever seen that on a map, and I've looked. <laughs> can't say I've ever seen a Croatian in real life. Just yeah, saying. So can't be real. There's no way. I'm just saying. So, yeah, you know, X takes, short segment. Sometimes the fish are there, sometimes the fish are not there. <laughs> Sometimes you get crazy, you will just drop in your IP address and the responses. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, I know I teased you guys a little earlier today. Yeah, what's up? That we're going to play a game show, right? What if I told you that there are already, there already exists technology that can perfectly Im- imitate a human, right? What are you saying? I'm saying we're going to play a game, bro. Come on down, it's... Gath or oh, yeah. GF. Let me uh edit, edit in some theme music, you know, something I don't know. But uh, welcome to one of these people is fake. Christ. Okay. So here I'm gonna show you guys three images of uh, three supposedly real people. One of them does not exist. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna send you a picture, and I'm gonna Evil. send you a little a snippet, a little snippet, a little bio about them, and you guys are gonna make a judgment call on which one is the fake person. Sure. Okay. So here is our first contestant. Her. Okay. okay. Contestant number is Rachel. Rachel is a 23 year old college student studying zoology out of Texas A&M. She comes from Wichita, Nebraska, and thoroughly enjoys training for marathons and hiking with her dogs. Okay. I don't, okay. I don't like that they have bios. Now here is contestant number two. Hold on. JPEG is uploading. Mm. This is Alex. Alex is a 32-year-old small business owner. He owns a local t-shirt printing company out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And in his free time, he enjoys coaching his son's club soccer team. Kind of looks like my dad. <laughs> I don't like that. And he's not coaching here, my soccer team. <laughs> here is contestant number three. Contestant number three is Nicole from Albany, New York. After graduating Columbia University with a major in photography and a minor in fashion journalism, she now works full-time for Vogue magazine, and in her free times, she enjoys shooting photos of abandoned locations across New York. Gentlemen, begin your delegations and tell me who the android infiltrator is. Ryan, you had a very visceral response to the first candidate. I'm not gonna lie to you. I had a visceral response to all three. <laughs> I mean, what what's, that, what what constitutes a visceral response? What do you mean? What's wrong? Hmm? So, um, so uh, visceral response is just so. <sighs> I, I I look for emotion in eyes when I'm talking to people, and um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm covering their eyes, everything up but their eyes, and I just don't. The only person that doesn't really give off like that creep and I, i'm definitely affected because you said that w- only one of them isn't real yes well, one of these people is not real i don't i, I have uh, to go with the one that has the least amount of blemishes and that's rachel you believe rachel is the android imposter yeah is, okay christian is rachel the bottom one R- R- rachel's the top, the top one okay because i found the bottom or the the third candidate the most convincing Something, something really? about that seems to. Well, your response makes me uncomfortable. But yeah, yeah. 
Ah, I just want to know like what, <laughs> what sets her apart from the other two. Let me see here. It's, I think it's like the 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 preparedness of the photo. It looks like a headshot session. There's like an angle, like someone was trying something here. The the middle dude kind of looks like a candid, and the top one just looks like an AI generated like, monster. Middle one looks like salami, bro. So we know he's real. Yeah, that I'm I'm pretty convinced the middle and bottom are real people. So you're locking. You're both locking in. Rachel as the imposter. Yeah. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Drum roll, please. Um, you are both correct, but you are both <laughs> also wrong as fuck. All three of these people are android infiltrators. Fuck God. I told you I started out with that. Fucking See? damn it. <laughs> oh, I'm going to lead the resistance, dude. They're going to eat my fucking ass. Now, open up a new tab. Open up a new tab and type in this person does not exist and click on the first result. Actually, I will just link it to you. It was like, as I started typing it, it filed it out myself. Yeah. Oh, so it just makes, so it's just like a oh website that uses God. AI to generate God. people? Yep. I... Just, just refresh it. Just refresh it a couple times. I can use this to catch Each people on Bumble. These are so fucking convincing. Oh, these are can all find, good. Can you find anything in here that would give it away that this is like a fake robot generated picture? I'd say the ratio to face is kind of off in the ones I've been looking at. All right, here's There's one. like too much face on the side. There's one that looks like Christian. Don't say that. This, one this one's like... This, dude, it's, it's generated a baby. Babies aren't real. There's some kids. Babies aren't real. Oh, God. This is fun. Every time I save the photo, it shows me a different person, not who I saved. This is scary. Yep. You just downloaded malware. <laughs> I'm just downloaded Huawei. Oh, here's one that kind of looks... Like lizardish. Let me send this to y'all. One moment. Smash that screenshot button. This dude looks like a reptile. He looks a little lizardy. So His eyes was, are off. Yeah, dude. So when I was scanning these earlier, right, yeah. trying to fucking uh, find any blemishes, make sure that these all look human. The only thing that I could find that was off about these pictures, and in any of them really so far, is look at the eyes. They're rate like they're fucking. I don't know what the parts of the eyes are called, but the color colored part. It's not like a perfect circle. It's like smushed in in some spots. It's got like weird reflections. They're fucking pupils or weird. Where your soul lives, bro. That's why it's all fucked up for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this one I'm looking at right now. Her eyes are weird. That's good. That's you know? good that they don't have the algorithm perfect, Jackson freaking out it was perfect enough to fool you guys you thought fucking alex was coaching club soccer yeah because he looks like he was made in like a play-doh play, uh, play press did <laughs> did you write these bios yourself i did you're i did i felt really weird doing you're it you're a psychopath <laughs> <laughs> you were really good at that yeah you <laughs> were they convincing little bios yeah you should they write were. christmas cards sweet dude oh my god <laughs> Yeah. This fucking sucks, bro. This is the transhumanist fucking hellscape that we're creating for ourselves, boys. I'm gonna get deep faked so easily when I'm like 70. <laughs> I, saw, I saw John F. Kennedy come back. He came, out, he came out of the pyramid. He came out of the pyramid where they I'm buried Reagan. Controller. <laughs> yeah, that's... uh. That's pretty much all I got on the Uncanny Valley. You know, watch out for the androids. They're here. They exist. It's a creepy phenomenon that I wanted to explore a little bit and talk about. And yeah. I, I, stuff like that wigs me out. So I love I love that you brought that up. Yeah. But I'm upset that you're exposing me. Yeah. Damn. You guys, you guys like the little game show? Oh, I did yeah. like your game show. We should do that more often. Oh, yeah. I thought I thought you guys were gonna see through it immediately and be like, yeah, they're all. They're all I did, real. bro. Like, I, like her and the last lady, I was like, they're just too perfect. This guy, I've seen real human beings that look like that. Exactly, the real fathers too. Real human beings that look like all three of them. I've never seen. I've 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 never seen a blonde woman. I've never seen a woman with blue eyes before. Sorry. 
<laughs> so so immediately I'm start, I'm cycling through all of the people that I know. A majority of like the human faces that I've encountered are all anime people. So that knocked out about ninety eight percent. Yeah, yeah, None yeah, of them yeah. are blonde, bro. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> all right. Yep. Well uh I'll go. Cool. You guys ever heard of the Loch Ness? Mom, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> you ever heard of the Nessie? <laughs> no, so, um, Dan and I purchased a game on Steam yesterday. Um, <laughs> because we, we, we've been playing a lot of Phasmophobia as well, Christian included. And, uh, the premise of that game is that you go in and you find out what the ghost is in the house and you leave. And they say, oh, the cleanup crew is going to show up. We didn't know what that looked like. What is a ghost cleanup crew? Is it like a group of exorcists? Is it a group of monks? Is it a culmination of different religions? Is it um, a, a pack of androids? Um, you know, to go expunge this ghost. Some like spiritualists. Well, uh, I think we found what it was. And it's this in this game, it's called SPAT, Special Paranormal Attack Team. It's just a bunch of... Um, tier one operators rolling up into like the open woods and um fighting werewolves and cryptids and all these things without anything special other than their m4 carbines and their (laughs) fast 12 (laughs) shotguns and their fucking like barrett 50 cals when dan and i played we actually pull up to the scene in like a fucking apc striker like like the cop cars are behind us and then you see our giant armored personnel carrier (laughs) and we're just there running through the freaking woods um, fully kitted out, shooting like giant mole rat demons. But the reason why I say that I bring those up is because one of the because one of your marks in that is a werewolf. So I've been in a werewolf mood since I played this game spat last night. <laughs> Great game, game of the year. Truly, truly. Um, I if any of you listeners should truly invest and go get that game because it is really fun to play with your friends. It is ridiculous. But so I'm talking about werewolves and um. This is more like a story, like a creepy story about a werewolf. Great. That I thought was kind of cool because usually when I think of werewolves, I think of werewolves in Europe. Because, you know, it's not like, you know, that's where all that stuff kind of happens. <laughs> all the bad things come from Europe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Look, werewolves, you got vampires out there, the freaking Mylings and the Banshee. Ooh, conquistadores. Colonizers. Yeah. Conquistadores, bro. Yeah. They're out there in Europe, bro. My my scariest <laughs> cryptid is the Conquistadores, bro. No. <laughs> Hernando de Soto. <laughs> Cortez, pendejo. Um, so, <laughs> so, but, so I wanted to, this story is about werewolves in the United States. And um, particularly, there was this really creepy story that I had heard. And I, I was like, I, I want to tell this story on the podcast because that will freak me out because they don't know if they're werewolves. So dive in with me, my friends. So in 2007, 2007. Can you tell I speak for a living? In 2007, there was a couple huh. that lived in this place in Maine called Palmyra, Maine. And they're up in the wood, super wooded area. Yeah, it, It's like it, as close as you can get to being out in the wilderness. There's like just forest behind their house. Yeah. So what happens is they move up there and they're just kind of living life as it is. And the husband, Eric, he's an avid hunter. So he owns <laughs> some rifles. Of course. <laughs> And that's such an area that that's something that people do. They go hunting. So it's not like the woods are uncharted. People are hunting in them. So essentially, what starts happening is one night they're out kind of just like doing things at night. I think he was unloading from his car at night. And they look out into the tree line and they see these glowing lights, these big glowing lights out into the tree line. And he's like, oh, maybe that is hunters or something he's like, well, i gotta tell them that they can't be hunting this close to my property so they walk out and the and the lights are gone i'm getting like very skinwalker ranch vibes right off the jump from this yeah you know mm-hmm. so he's like whatever so this happens again and uh so they're kind of like not on edge because you know it's not you're not in the middle of nowhere you're in palmyra maine it's the united states now, here's one thing you have to understand. There are no wolf population. There is no wolf population in Maine. There have been scattered reports of wolves right. because they're so close to Canada. But there is no, like, you know, back like when, like, the Native Americans were around, stuff like that, like, where these roaming massive packs of wolves, that's 
that's not there. It's too metropolitan. It's too, it's too uh, civilized in that area. Mm-hmm. So imagine their surprise when they're sitting on their front porch one night and it's foggy outside and they look out and they see these, they just get this feeling that something's wrong. So they kind of get up and they look out into the fog and the husband's going to go take a look and see what's out there. And he stops and he really stops and looks. And then he starts to see eyes in the fog. He's like, what the, what is that? Like a fox or something? I'm not familiar with what lives up there in Palmyra, Maine. Uh, You know, it could be any sort of woodland creature, but he kind of felt this dread. He's looking at it. He's like, what is this? And all of a sudden, this creature stands up on its hind legs and it's seven feet tall. No, sir. And the guy said it was a wolf-like creature. Mm -hmm. So they run back into the house, lock the doors, and they're, you know, but they're out there by themselves. The nearest neighbor's like miles away. So they start turning off the lights and stuff like that because they hear, like, claws. They they hear, like, you know, dog, like, these things running up to the house. It wasn't just one. Some of them start, some of them start coming from the side. Of the house. So imagine if old buddy had walked out there to see what it was, thinking it was one. Pack hunting is what they were doing. Multiple werewolves? Yeah. Well, the thing is, they don't know what they were. But here's the thing. So they start closing the doors. And he's like, he's like, he he thinks to himself, I need to get my guns. But he remembers that his wife had said, I don't want guns in my house. So he stuck (laughs) them in the shed out in the back. You dumbass. (laughs) So... Not my house. I know, right? It's not in my house. It's like, you'll, you know, little did you know the hellhounds were showing up later that night. So essentially what happens is they hold themselves up in their house. But throughout the whole night, they can hear scratching on the walls. They can hear things tapping on the windows. Oh. And they can vaguely make out these giant, like, humanoid hunched over wolf things walking around and, like, chattering to each other. Almost like they're talking. Oh, my God. And, like... The scariest part is at one point, one goes up and starts jiggling the doorknob like it knows how to open it and then walks away because the door's locked. I hate and that. This was all night. But, the, like, just that in itself, just thinking, like, that there is some, like, you know, we, we had prior talked about, like, how there are unknown things because, you know, we as humans i think we know everything mm-hmm. and we're in one of the most developed countries in the world where you know when we're out there close to nature like that we can easily get caught with our pants down like cryptids aside how many people are killed by bears sometimes or yep. they you know they're killed by that the happens. great entity that is nature they you know die to exposure they fall off a cliff hiking because they For don't pay sure. attention you know but just to think that there might be something else out there that's seven feet tall and there's more than one and it rolls in a pack that was a pack yeah that was not afraid to roll up on this family and the thing is like this they had been seeing those lights out in the forest for like weeks so it's almost like whatever these things were yeah were snaking the house out oh oh is and they almost knew hey he doesn't have any guns in the house. God. Because I know that they're saying at one point they were in their room and they looked out and the curtain, he forgot whether or not, because he could see the outline of one of these creatures out there, he forgot whether or not he locked the window. Like those big windows you open up to get up on the oh, balcony. Oh, God, bro. And like these things were all over the house on the roof on that side balcony and when they came out there were just these scratch marks all over the side giant scratch marks all over the side of the house fuck that but the thing is they would walk around like wolves too they they weren't just you know it's not like a freaking worgen from world of warcraft they would like go walk on all fours but then like when they're looking around the house they stand up like humans and they're walking around so the thing is like they're not sure if where they were living because that, because like you know, like that's kind of like supernatural, I'd say in itself. But even the husband prior to that had said he 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 remembered looking out into the woods and seeing like a uh, like this ethereal child in like these really dated what? clothing. <laughs> exactly. Wait a so minute. so 
Yeah. So people are wondering if that has to do with the lights and like the, these, the child and these werewolves are like, is their house on some type of ley line? Is the spirit world closer or is the veil thinner where their house is and are things coming through? Because if so, he should probably start storing the guns in the house. That's all I'm saying. That's yeah. strike two. Good. Yeah. No, 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 no. So, like, I, you know, as, as I was looking at that story, you know, it, it made me really think about uh, Skinwalker Ranch. Because that's kind of like, you know, not to the same extent, but I know in Skinwalker Ranch, they had, like, those lights that would appear at first. Then they'd run up and the lights would almost, like, retreat farther into, like, the woods then disappear. Yeah. And they would be seeing things like, I, yeah, like, again, this is just, like, a sighting. This is an, an anecdote. And... This was more like a fun kind of scary story to tell, but um, it, it was such a popular um story that it actually was featured on the TV show Paranormal Witness. You guys I seen that show? I have not seen Paranormal I'm, Witness. Honestly, I can't even tell if I have or have not because they all have such similar names. Yeah, it's a paranormal entity, paranormal witness, bada bing, bada bing. But uh, yes, because that kind of also ties together, not just with that. I didn't know that these were two separate things, first off. There's a werewolf, and then there is a dog man. Oh, you don't know about the dog man, bro? No, dude, I didn't know about that until, like, I mean, not like, I, I didn't find out about the dog man now, like, because of this. But, like, I'll throw these scary stories on, you know, I, I was looking at it. And I'm like, what? Well, I mean, do you mean a werewolf? They're like, no, we mean dog man. It's a whole separate creature, and that blew my mind that that's even out there. You know, I'm gonna post some a picture of what I found on my research in the you know in the chat. I love dominated by the dog man. <laughs> um, I don't know if I can put that on the on the on the YouTube video. They can join our Patreon right. and see it. Uh, I do. I, for those of you joining the Patreon. Patreon, I will be doing an audiobook reading of it with all of my voice acting equipment, and I may even get a woman to play some of the roles. So that's tune in thing. for that. It's that's me. a twenty-five dollar. Yeah, it's Dan. I'm gonna pitch shift him, <laughs> and uh, that's that. Uh, that's for our twenty-five dollar a month patron. So tune in. Uh, but yeah, so like, so for me, I, I kind of went down this like rabbit hole of like, well, then what's a dog man? You know, like, you know, I, I went back to like looking at what the dog man was, looking up to like different like Native American kind of things that may have happened there I, i'm still doing the research on it and i'd love to bring come back around when i find out more things I, i'm gonna be flying out there soon to investigate no i'm just kidding um no i sure won't come a, with you <laughs> i'm a city boy uh but you know i i'd like to see because you know the native americans saw things differently than you know we're so we're so used to this like metro metropolitan civilized life that we've been living and it kind of yeah. goes back to like you know they were out there when there was nothing man it was just trees and like rock and you know trees like and rock you know like that's it there's nothing out there back when like you know the, like like these mighty native american tribes like oh. still held their home i know you weren't on this podcast disrespecting tonachititlan you know what that decline, bro? What are you talking about, bro? You mean the floating city? Exactly. The floating city with irrigation? With bro? plumbing, bro. Oh, well, well, over there, while well, the Europeans were slinging shit at each other back, you know? <laughs> hey, they came for our people because of jealousy. Let's not lie. <laughs> you know, yeah, they got their floating city. It looks back over at Europe, just a cesspool. They're like, yeah, well, we have the Pope. Look. <laughs> Dominated we have the Vatican. The we have the Vatican. Listen, we're th this podcast is going to take off, and we're going to get so big that we're going to be able to go look at the Vatican secret archives, bro, and see what's going on. They're going to let me walk in and be like, "Yeah, I heard there was a uh, something going on here." I heard you we're have the finger break, of the Antichrist. We're breaking in there and finding the Apocryphon of John. Oh yeah, yeah the secret dude. texts. The secret texts where where you open up, it literally says, "Gotcha." <laughs> I bet you worked real hard to read this, and that was it. <laughs> exactly. The thing, but the, yeah, no, go ahead. No, 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 no. I was gonna keep going, so you keep talking. No, I the you tantalized me with this story. It was such like a like an active monster sighting. But I feel like if you live in an American town, 
that has a name from some fucking town or village in Europe. Like, it's an old name. You're yeah. already asking to be cursed. Like, if you live in Palmyra or you live in fucking Athens or Rome, U.S., Roanoke. you're begging yeah. to be haunted. Yeah, if you live in, like, Belfast, Massachusetts, like... Yep. It's over. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> in fact, you deserve it. Just move. Yeah. What are you holding out for? Yeah, especially because there's nothing out there. The final frontier of the United States. Shit. And the the second part uh, I was thinking was how much like sentience do you like in your werewolf creatures? Do you want them to be like dudes who turn and still have their humanity, or don't ever fucking post that photo again, bro? I about <laughs> shit my pants. I'm in a closet right now, bro. Oh, that's the dog, man. I'm about to piss down my leg, bro. <laughs> Got that hot stream coming down. Do you, do you like them when they're when they're? I want them. I want them sent enough to be domi- to uh, dominate me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I, I, I guess it depends on the context of what's happening. So if we're looking at like, I don't know. I, I, I'd like to see like the werewolf not as portrayed as always an evil entity. You know, I think it's like you know, it, like it's Taylor cool to Lockyer. see. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think he's probably the epitome. Shoot me. No, um, well, I was thinking more Hugh Jackman from the Van Helsing movie, where it's almost like, you know, there's like the titular evil vampire, then it's like the werewolf or whatever, or like, I don't know. I, I guess it depends. Like, are we talking like a work of fiction or are we talking like an anecdote where someone experienced it? Because I think it's almost scarier, at least for me, when it's like this rabid monster in real life to encounter because I feel like if it's like human enough you could trick it with human things like turning the TV on and then like <laughs> when it looks away you shoot it yeah. in its face yeah, yeah. I, I mean I'd, I'd just prefer to not encounter this so I don't care how sentient or not sentient it is for sure but like <laughs> the, the going um, stereotype I guess you would say is like a like a werewolf in, in like a berserker or rage like it doesn't know what it's doing quote unquote it's in its animalistic urges but these dudes in Palmyra were like ringing the doorbell ding and ding and trying to get in and stuff yeah that's that's yeah. a little sinister too, too much mm-hmm. like, it, like, like it almost reminds me like it makes me think this if it was like a werewolf as we know it and it is, is a human that turns then it wasn't out there to kill them that day because it could have opened the door at any time. Or it showed up to cause fear. You know, like it showed up to... Think me and the werewolf boys are just going around scaring them that, That's what I feel like they were doing. It's like they were toying with them. Some because you know, if it, Yeah, forest trolls. Me and the boys get, just getting a little laugh. <laughs> getting a little chuckle out of it. You know I had to do it to them. You know what I'm saying? Oh man! They, they probably staked up the house. Like, look at that guy! Look at that guy! <laughs> he, he can't have. He can't keep his guns in his house. Let's get him! Look, <laughs> we're gonna do this man a favor. Give him a hard lesson. And, all right. So now this man, watch the house now, bro. Has freaking static turrets everywhere. There's like an armor map. Yeah. It's not. It, it, it's not a farm anymore. They live on a compound. They live on like a military compound. Yeah, I would too if I had this full on like invasion go down. Accosted. <laughs> Fuck that. So, yeah, that's my little spooky story about my little spooky life. My little spooky, stupid face. So, yeah. <laughs> like that. I like that <laughs> Those are fun. I like to think so. I like to think about what I would do if I was in that situation while I'm laying in bed at night and I scare myself. <laughs> Nothing, dude. I would just die. Like, <laughs> you think so? <laughs> So, so, so you're one of those rollover guys? I don't know. I don't want to well, be I mean, eaten like, alive. I'm going to go down swinging, but like, I'm too. not going to win. Yeah, that reminds me of that, uh, of that, of that British movie, British, the, uh, the Dogman movie. Have you seen that? Where like, the SAS fights the Dogman in the woods? No. <laughs> you I almost watched it and then I did such, it. Oh, it's called Dog Soldier. It's such a good movie. Yeah, Dog it's so good. Soldier? It's, it's actually a really great movie. Stop. I watched it like three times. Oh my god. And it's like the British SAS pull up and they're like dogmen and the dogmen are like dog soldier and they fucking murk them. 
Yeah. No, I know about the I know about the dog man. I me and me and a bunch of my buddies have an inside joke about the dog man. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> he's it wouldn't be an inside joke if I told it. He's okay. a dog soldier. What nation does he fight for? Uh, Apparently British. Dog Scotland. Irish. Dog. Irish. Well, I mean, if he's if, he, if he's opposing the SAS, he's probably part of like the Irish Liberation yeah, Front, the ILF or whatever. Or whatever yeah, the ILF. <laughs> Good for them. I know, right? They finally said We're, enough is enough, and they deployed uh, <laughs> arcane weaponry against the British. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> allow me, if you will, to. To take the baton and move past the fucking dominate me dog man. I keep looking at this photo, bro. <laughs> I gotta read this. Look, who knows? <laughs> Cryptid yeah, romance. Be An great. untapped reservoir of content, if and, you will. And uh, let me present to you a, a creature that probably does not have any erotic fiction for it. Mm. Oh, I don't know. That's a, that's a bold claim. <laughs> have, have either of you heard... Of the very, uh, very vague term, atmospheric beasts. Atmospheric beast? No. No. Oh. Well, these atmospheric beasts are sort of found at a a weird uh, connection line between. Uh, cryptozoology and, and astrobiology. That is the life of things that aren't part of our planet. Uh, there's a lot of these very strange sightings of what appears to be creatures living in the upper atmosphere. I heard of these, yes. Yeah. They frequently come in the form of sort of translucent, vaguely jellyfish-like creatures. Yeah. But like you... You will look up into the sky one day and you'll see like this, this silhouette of a creature. You'll see this vague outline of a blob. And in these sightings have been going on, you know, forever. People have been looking up at the sky and going, what's going on up there? Yeah. And as the... Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it might be a little too much credit, but like as like the the UFO culture started to form in the 1900s, they, people started to look back at these uh, sky serpents and uh, sky creature stories and thinking, oh, maybe it's these unidentified uh, cryptids of the atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And there, most people with like actual bio, biology degrees are like, well, yeah. You know, b birds can go pretty high up in the sky, but th th it's not really a good life up there to live like in the deep upper atmosphere. It doesn't seem like <laughs> much. Like almost in orbit. Yeah, there's not much to sustain life out there. I don't really know what uh, what you would expect to find out there. Uh -oh. Well, uh, one of the explanations that I frequently am seeing from these. Uh, uh, people uh, purporting these sightings, and you're going to love this one, is the rot from the stars. Oh. The, the huh, what? Sounds like some type of like Lovecraftian entity. Oh, yeah. Uh, Semi-frequently, <clears throat> the, the sighting of atmospheric beasts coincides with comets and asteroids and meteors passing through. So some people have attributed that maybe these little hitchhikers jump off, detach themselves from the meteorite, and they just sort of flow on down from the, the stars onto the planet. No way. <laughs> and uh, that fucking sucks, personally. I hate that one. Uh, yeah, me too. I don't like that one bit. And it kind of, um... Yeah. Kind of reminds me of like this. I, I forgot where and it was in the United States, but at some point a meteor passed over, and people found these like jelly globules in like a forest nearby. And people who touch yeah. it would get sick. Shit, just like that. Crazy, stupid shit from a, a meteor. Yeah. And uh, I, the the I think most common one, and this is something most people might have um, already heard of, are the air rods. Have you heard of these? 
I have heard of the air rods, the sky hooks or whatever they're called. No. I'm looking it up. They're like shitty D tier cryptids of just like shapes in space. Shapes like in the air that people take photos of and they're like, what is this like spiral I'm seeing? Or what is this like oh. straight line in the sky? <clears throat> it's literally like a jelly in his eye. Like like an eye floater. Yeah, they That's look like those. Saying. And they're like, this is a cryptid. It's gotta be. <laughs> and- yeah, and then like it fine come didn't it like come to fruition that it was like just a trick of the camera? Most error rod um photos are like, yeah, the camera fucked up. Or it's dust. Or something really far away that came out weird in the photo. Yeah. And back back in the early days, I was like, I'm going to do this air rods thing. Like, everybody has kind of heard about them. It'll be something. And it just turns out they fucking suck. It just turns out they fucking suck. Like, how was I going to stretch a 20-minute segment out of it? the fake? <laughs> some, yeah. some, some dude in the sky doesn't exist. So I really latched on to the uh, air or the, the rod of the stars segment. It, it really attaches itself to um, our good friend Ryan's favorite author, H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's practically the color out of space brought to life. Like, in, in all intents and purposes. I love that. And I hate it at the same time. <laughs> Have you seen the new color out of space? With, with Jack Nicholson? With or, Nicolas Cage? Well, they're the same person. You, you can't tell me they're not. They're different. They're, they're the same spirit manifested different bodies. And I, I wish that I had these uh, contemporary examples that, that we frequently see in these stories. Is like, oh, you know, there was this myth that when, you know, 2,000 years ago, someone saw this demon in the woods, and now that becomes a cryptid that we enjoy today. But the, the work hasn't really been done on some of these sky creatures from earlier uh, myth, these like uh, eastern dragons or these uh, <laughs> just like it's it's a cryptid, I think waiting to happen, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's, it's something that you're su- it, it feels like in 20 years or something we would be able to see the cryptid sort of general path that we see now coalesce yeah. around one of these uh, atmospheric beasts and really give us something cool. Sure, yeah. I mean, you don't really, like, there's not really a lot of aerial cryptids, like, what, Thunderbirds, you know? Yeah, those are just real. <laughs> I mean, like, people seeing pterodactyls and stuff like that? Like, Yeah, like, up, up. People see all kind of wacky shit everywhere. Isn't that my? Uh, I think like my favorite childhood book is like a some dudes found pterodactyls in the jungle or something. They went cryptid hunting for them. That kicks ass. Mm-hmm. No, I found was centipede bites. The the most famous example, and let me make sure I spell this right. It's the Crawfordsville monsters. Okay. This is the sort of it, it, it blends the line between a UFO and a atmospheric beast encounter. This is in uh, the worst state in the Union, Indiana, but you already knew that. Mm-hmm. I still got a for Arkansas. <laughs> oh, cool. so Arkansas is on the list. Georgia's on the list, but Indiana takes the cake for me personally. As the, yeah, for me as well. <laughs> this is uh, the 1890s. And it says that on September 5th, two ice delivery men saw a strange hovering apparition in the sky that it was, quote, about 18 feet long, 18 feet wide, and moved rapidly through the air by means of paired side fins. It was pure white, no definite shape or form, and resembled the great propeller fins and they just said that it was just squirming through the sky one day just why just like have either of you played 
Shadow of the Colossus. Yes, I know exactly which which Colossus you're talking about, yeah. There's a shitty Sky Colossus who has, like, a thousand wings, but he can't fly for shit. He just kind of, like, lazily thumps around. Okay. That's what it was doing. And yeah, the best way to describe it would be it moves, it moves like, without intention. Like, it kind of just, like, floats and bobs. Like, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Yeah. And the, <laughs> see, I'm, I'm stumbling over my words. I'm having a hard time with this story because I'm reading this shit and I don't know what it means. So can, can either of you help me with this? Well, sure. Yeah. Send it. What do you got? Like, <laughs> it says the two men followed the wraith creature about and around town and discovered it to be maybe a flock of maybe a hundred kill deer. Bitch, what's okay. a kill deer? Is that a bird? Did you Google a kill deer? No, I did not, bro. Oh. <laughs> I was going to hit the, no. the live Google here on the chat. You're going to get it. We're getting the live Google. Kill deer. Is it spelled how it sounds? This is just a fucking bird. Is it? Not that that. I don't think I, I think it's kill a deer. Yeah, I mean, like, if, I mean, if, if it was, if there was as many as these ice men sound. See, with stories like that, I look at who's telling it, and these guys are delivering ice for a living, so they're bored <laughs> out of their minds. <laughs> so you know they're trying to make something, so they could go home on their kid ass, Boppy Boppy, what did you do? It's like it's not like oh, I delivered ice again. It's like <laughs> I saw <a> Sky Beast. <laughs> <laughs> sky Beast. <laughs> On one yeah, day, they're... you may see the Sky Beast as well. Quick, quickly, get your mother up on the phone. I don't care if she's talking to that new guy she's talking to. Tell her that your dad saw <laughs> Sky Beast and she can come back and it's not embarrassing anymore to be around me. <laughs> Tell her that others saw the Sky Beast as well. And, all right. <laughs> and Tell him Brad saw it too. The... And his wife's coming back too. <laughs> <laughs> the likely explanation they gave is that this was a, just a weird flock of birds that behaved weirdly and these dudes misinterpreted it as one of the, the atmospheric beasts floating low to the ground just a wacky little flock of birds nothing to worry about here but like i i have somewhat uh confidence in some dude from 1890 can see a flock of birds and know that it's a flock of fucking birds yeah unless you dropped the ice on your skull that day but, yeah i have confidence in that so, no. so what's going on? Um, <laughs> it's the sky beast, bro. What else? Do I say? Simple as it's the beast. <laughs> Simple as the sky the beast. You explained it yourself, bro. Mm -hmm. He explained it for you, bro. It's, it's, it's this uh, what would you say was fucking sky beast? <laughs> what what are they call altitude monsters? <laughs> yeah, that's them. That's them. That's got to be it. They're just impersonating those birds. Yeah. <laughs> those British men surely weren't lying. <laughs> the not birds. Yeah, it's the not birds. Look, come on. Nobody has ever told a lie in in regards to a cryptid. Who would lie to get famous? Nobody. All right? Surely okay. not me. No. <laughs> I trust him. I, the, the hardest part about giving the atmospheric beasts credit is that they are some of the coolest fucking photos that you can find. Oh, really? And instead of turning this into, like, collage day, where I just upload 10,000 photos to the video, just go take a look. Some of these look really fucking cool. Like, there's these weird alien, like, flying creatures. Yeah, yeah they do look pretty cool, huh? What are, what, are, what, are you, what are you looking up when you Google these? Uh, atmospheric beasts. Simple as. Love them. That's the word I was looking for. Atmospheric beasts. Not altitude monsters. Oh, wow. These all look like fucking magic cards. Yeah, they're all like semi, like reptilian almost. Like they're these weird alien creatures that I, like our society ain't ready for that. Yeah. Keep them hidden. <laughs> Whatever you are. <laughs> it's funny because, like, you say how they're just kind of like, oh, man, just kind of like these, like, kind of do-nothing creatures. But then you have, like, the fucking star rot 
that sounds like something that that sounds like something that should happen with a cooler cryptid. <laughs> Do you yeah. know how many times I look up a cryptid and I'm like, man, this one's gonna be so cool. It sounds so sick. And then they're like, it's a horse who got a cold one day. <laughs> and then and it, and it what you thought. Oh, <laughs> fuck. And the name is cooler than the cryptid, man. That's the worst. It happens like maybe 40% of the monsters that I look up. <laughs> Singular day. And this one's going to be an absolute <laughs> banger. <laughs> it wasn't. This is a squirrel with leukemia. The squirrel stood up and said, Hey! Hey! It's like, it's talking to me. The squirrel is talking to me. It's the not squirrel. So sometimes they're winners. Sometimes they're losers. Let's just call it today. Atmospheric Beast, a fucking loser. Yeah. Come back to me when you're this cool um, asteroid rod. Now, do you, either you think you'll live long enough to get the next Haley's Comet? Oh, yeah, easy. Like 400 years? It's in the 60s. 2060s? Yeah. Unfortunately, I do think I'll be alive for that. I want to be alive for that one and the next one, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, 2061, bro? I, I don't know about that. I want to ingest some of the star, some it's of like the star juice. 40 years? Yeah. My ass is still going to be working. <laughs> the fuck you mean? <laughs> nah, man. Okay. I don't like that. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'll be here. The, the thing I'm saying, though, is that if we all get together, when Haley's Comet comes around, and we start licking, like, the asbestos that drops from the sky when it passes, yeah, we won't be around for the next Haley's Comet. 100% of you that. This passing that's coming up is going to be five times closer than the one in, like, the early 1900s, and we went through the tail of Haley's Comet at that time. What? Like it, Dude, it, really? It, it cast this super long tail of, like, uh... Uh, gas is burning off of it, and the Earth passed through it, and it's going to be closer than that this time. What about when it crashes into us? No, it's not going to hit us, but it's just going to season us. We're going to get some asteroid salsa on our face. <laughs> it's going to wake up, have superpowers, and that's is what, that, is that what you're telling. Me? I'm proposing that we each take turns getting that asteroidal radiation. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, bro, I'm about to walk out there with COVID twenty, bro. Fucking. <laughs> That's that. <laughs> Great. It's a date in uh in forty years. <laughs> we're all gonna we're all gonna meet up. Yeah, I'll be there, bro. Uh, well, I'll be almost uh, uh, seventy. <laughs> that ain't a thing. So that's you know, that's it for me. Do we do we have any perhaps special events planned that we want to tell people about? Uh, yeah, we do have a special event planned. Um, I already said I'm going to Maine, so I don't know what gets more special than that. It's going to be uploaded on the channel by the end of the year, but it definitely will be filmed by the end of the year. Um, the boys, we're going to go ghost hunting. It's finally time. Enough hiding. We're going to do a little amateur ghost hunt this winter, um, and we're going to film it, and uh, we're going to upload it to the channel. And it's going to be a great time. And if we never upload again after December 20th, then you, you're you know going to know. <laughs> yeah, we, we fucking died. Yeah, we fucked. Uh, the ghost got us. And that <laughs> you, the ghosts are real. Do not investigate further. Yeah, do not come looking for us. You won't like what you find. Do not look for us. Um, ignore the screaming. Ignore the tapping on your windows. And uh, yeah, you know. But yeah, we're actually going to film a little ghost hunting video, see if we can uh, get some ghost footage on camera. It'll be a good time, even if nothing happens and we're just like three assholes standing in the middle of a (laughs) house or on a bridge. I don't want to tease the location yet. I know we're going to get stream sniped, except it's going to be a dude who shoots us at the haunted house. Yeah, literally (laughs) snipes us. It's going to be one of the spat guys we saw too much. He can come kill us. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah... um, I'm sure we'll give updates for that. We'll talk about it um, probably after we film it and probably get it uploaded by the end of the year, if not early next year. Uh, It's going to be a great time, and I think everybody's going to like it. But, uh, yeah, that's really the only, like, news, I guess, for the channel. Um, Okay. Well, if if the people want to tell us about their ghost hunting experiences, where can they get at us? 
they can get at us on um, comments on this video. You know, you can email us at supermadtower at gmail.com. You can hit us up on Twitter at Mad Tower Radio, and you can hit us up on Instagram at Mad Tower Radio. And yeah, that's pretty much the best ways to get in contact with us. Uh, we're troubleshooting some issues at the moment. Some oh, of the yeah. episodes aren't uh, appearing on Spotify. We're trying to upgrade to Podbean so that we can distribute this podcast in better ways. So oh, yeah. episodes aren't uh, coming up on Spotify. Don't worry about it. They'll be up there. But yeah, that's pretty much all we got for you. <laughs> and Mad Tower Radio ending transmission. A frequency beyond space and time. Unspeakable knowledge. It is Mad Tower Radio.